You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts. Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, along with Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian and Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time for episode due of your bi-weekly options extravaganza known as the option block with the cool kids call the old OB. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com as well as, of course, from the aforementioned network. Reminding you, if you like what you hear, it could be the option block, could be boot camp, could be OPR, could be ball views, AO, all the freaking shows we do throughout the week and in interviews, crypto, I'm forgetting a bunch. <laughs> Keep rating and reviewing. It really does help the legion of new people who are, A, discovering the world of options, and then they turn to whatever platform they like, iTunes, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, whatever, and they type options in there, <laughs> and then they find us, <laughs> and then they see your ratings and reviewings, and it really does help a lot of new folks turn to what we hope is the light side in a sea of dark side in terms of options and financial content out there. Of course, keep those questions and comments coming to you, particularly for a week like this. We know you got them. Let's all work it out, work through it together. And let's see who we're working through this mad week together with first. Because it's crazy times, let's start out calm. Let's start out tranquil. Let's go to where it's always the light side, a.k.a. St. Charles, where I am joined once again by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program today, sir. I don't understand what you mean by craziness, so... Life is calm. What what could possibly be crazy? Life under the weather shield in St. Charles, always calm, always tranquil. Nothing could possibly rattle them out there. Instead, shifting gears completely from calm and tranquil. Now we're going dark and stormy all the way out to the shores of Maine, listeners, to the Giovinazzi compound perched precariously there on the cliffs on the shores of Maine. Lightning raining down from the heavens, waves crashing against the shore. We are joined once again by the Rock Lobster, Mr. Andrew Gibinazzi, from the old OP, the Option Pit. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program. How go things on the dark and stormy shores of Maine? Well, I have to take off my, you know, my duck hat and my great coat because I had to come in from the storm to do the show. Um, but I actually, I think, you know, what was storming that 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 dang thing, Vix. I think that Vix was storming. Maybe we might have to talk about that as the show progresses. We might have to talk about that, I think, as we keep on rolling into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the trading block, the portion of the show where we break it down. All the madness, the mayhem, the chaos 
that is unfolding in the broad markets. Coming into today's show, not so much on the latter. Things seem a little bit calmer, a little bit more tranquil, at least if you consider green on the screen to be tranquil. We're still moving just in a different direction than the last couple of the days. Coming into showtime, we have the S&P up almost exactly 1%. We've got NASDAQ playing the laggard up about four-tenths of a percent, and Dow leading the charge up nearly 1.2% on the day. Of course, this is all hot on the heels of the market just getting straight into sell-off mode. I got a feeling, Mr. Rock Lobster, we're back in that Kenny Loggins lifestyle. Haven't been there in a little bit. It's a Kenny Loggins type of market again because we're back in the danger zone. Things are lurking. Things are scary. We're poised on the precipice. Where shall we go? I'll tell you where the vol products were going this week. They went aggressively north <laughs> vix cash topped out about 2770 we had vxx listeners vxx is moving like it's some tiny biotech out there got as high as nearly 50 49 and about a half out there it was almost 36 <laughs> not too long ago <laughs> ah oh how the madness is afoot so vxx getting some of its mojo back out there coming into today's show now we're seeing vix off those highs a bit, given today's stop to the bloodletting. 23 and a half when we kicked off the show. That puts it up still a robust six points from where it was on Monday, even though it was up almost eight not too long ago earlier in the session. Uh, we have VVIX, as you might figure, pretty frothy. <laughs> 133 and a half. That's up, oh, about 24 and a half points from where it was this time last show on Monday. And we've got our old friend VXX, like I said. Back up north of the 40 handle. It was a little bit shy of the, actually about 44 and a quarter coming into the start of the show. That still puts it up nearly eight points from where it was on Monday. So quite the aggressive rebound. You know, we always talk about VXX downside. But it can, in the short term, have a bit of movement to the upside as well. And we're certainly seeing that again right now. And good old VolQ finally got budged away from the 22 handles up to about 26 when we kicked off the show, it's about up about five and a quarter points from where it was on Monday. So a lot going on since we're hanging out in Kenny Loggins land, a.k.a. the danger zone. Let's head on out to those dark and stormy shores. Mr. Rock Lobster, what was catching your eye and the eye of Volman in these Kenny Loggins markets, sir? Um, well, I, as you say, with the Kenny Loggins, the danger zone, we are. Uh, 17 cents from the danger zone as option pit measures it, uh, 24 or greater vol for VIX, where uh, where things become frothy and freaky like the end of the day yesterday. Um, a good day to dump uh, VXX call spreads and VIX calls. Like I got prices for stuff I never would have thought I got would get for them <laughs> on Tuesday when VIX was 17 and a half. So um that part was good, so no complaints about getting rid of some stuff. What we are just hanging out at this level, right? So the market is still – so normally I think it takes uh, at least three three events to get into the danger zone. We had this Israeli thing, not good, uh, Gaza, that's like geopolitical badness. Um, uh, this inflation thing, uh, apparently we have inflation. I don't know. <laughs> Like, I don't know, my wife buys groceries. Who would have guessed that? Who, who would have guessed that inflation was a thing when you spend $8 yeah, bazillion? Yeah. Dollars. <laughs> Two trillion every quarter. And they're like, what are they doing? Um, but that's, but you know, we, I'm not going to talk politics, but the problem is politics bleeds into the economy, bleeds in the stock market. And at some point, the government has to stop spending money it doesn't have. I just assumed that that was some sort of orthodoxy, but apparently not. Um, so you got the inflation thing and again, just look at your grocery bill. And then number three is then all of a sudden, um, Elon Musk won't buy Bitcoin because of environmental concerns or won't take Bitcoin for cars. <laughs> that was your and third leg of the like, danger zone. It was Musk. <laughs> and that was the third leg. And like, and, and today my own rule, which is usually a pretty solid rule as of right now, shattered. Um, but the, I think the thing with, you know, Musk is all of a sudden, you know, so people are selling some of their Coinbase stock, they're selling some Ethereum, they're selling some of this, they're selling some of that, and they're taking some out of crypto market and uh, possibly into stocks and into gold. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if Tucson has any thoughts about that, but I think that was my, 
you know, why we didn't really, why we haven't really drifted farther away from the danger, you know, why and why that is, why we're kind of hanging there right now, because there's still like 2384, you know, the SPX is up 1%, which given how big of the sell-off was, they usually have a bounce. Um, and then, of course, this wild card again, and I, and I'm not dissing uh, Kathy Wood. I think you know she did. She's a pretty phenomenal uh, success. But there is like some still like pretty steady selling um, in like those art funds and the stocks that are in them. So I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I again, that's a very that's a more narrow, very growth oriented end of the market. The stuff in those funds. I did buy some put uh, put calendars in them today, because um, I'm actually <laughs> I actually owned like Palantir and uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Uh, I just added those things and I'm getting kind of run over in them. So uh, I figure, all right, well I'll buy <laughs> I'll buy some of these put calendars at least make some of the short term pain go away. Um, so. Uh, I thought the prices were pretty good for them, but uh, the, they were a little lower yesterday, <laughs> so I'm sitting on them a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I think, I mean, these are, there's, and obviously, these are all like inflation. Big thing was big Kurt Tech in uh, March. Uh, so all of that stuff, I think that's enough for, a, it's, it's enough for a, um, a volatile brew. And again, for listeners, like if you see us keep drifting away from that 24 handle and VIX, like 23, 22, like 21, things will start to peter out. But I just I haven't seen that. Like we hit that number and boom, we stop. So my guess is for today, we'll pretty much stop around here unless the news gets worse and ball goes back up. Um, and we'll see tomorrow, actually, if they sell the ball off into the weekend. So. Those are that's kind of what I'm looking at as far as that, um, you know, as far as VIX goes and and uh, and this kind of what I would call funky market action. But I think probably somebody like Tusa just sees opportunity everywhere. So I will throw it over to him. <laughs> he probably does see opportunity everywhere, but you're not alone feeling pain in these markets, Mr. Rock Lobster. Everyone has a little bit of pain, a little bit. I'm sure our listeners do, too. I felt it myself. I had a Rock Lobster moment myself. Earlier this week, I had some juicy BXX downside puts, and I was looking at them earlier. Really I said, no, you know, these are looking pretty good. I should probably take these off. <laughs> and you know, those things, you get busy, right? Doing a bunch of shows. You look up, oh, it's closed. I'll put an order in tomorrow. And, of course, there was no tomorrow because we've been off to the races ever since. So it's not just the Rock Lobster who misses out on orders every now and See the price I pay, listeners, literally, to provide content to you folks on a regular basis. Let's go on out. To the land of St. Charles, where he just lives by his screens when he's not talking to us. So he never misses an opportunity to trade. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, what is lighting up your tape on this? Once again, Uncle Mike type of day. Looking a little dicey for Uncle Mike there for a while, but now looking back in the green, sir. Oh, come on. Now it's all part of the fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's what uh, the, the market was looking for some type of reason to pull back. And I think that when we have the run like we had, uh, the last couple of days are inevitable. You're going to get something like that. And I think if, you, if you're not prepared for something like that, then you need to either just buy an index fund and never look at your account but once a year, or you need to just not be trading, quite frankly. And so um, I, a couple of things that I noticed from yesterday, uh, the one was uh, we did kind of sort of um, – we we did go below 4,100 in the SPX uh, fairly significantly, but uh, what we were able to do is we didn't free fall to the point to where 4,000 was a key number, or I feel it's a key number just because it's a, a big round number. And so we were a ways away from that. And so with my numbers, with my risk management, 4,000 was the area with which I was going to start looking to take deltas off. Uh, and so Ultimately, what happened to me yesterday in my short put spread was, I mean, it got hammered like every short put did, but um, it was mostly, it was more because of the vowel instead of the market coming down. And what I mean by that is, is I was far enough out of the money uh, to where um, it, it still needed, a, a, like I said, it was 4000 before I would even, that's what was my line in the sand to where it even start to uh, consider making some type of an adjustment. And so I uh, never got there. So with that, I'm like, oh, man, this is a rough day. But most of it was just from the vol 
um, pushing up the value of the short puts. And so whenever that happens, there's always theta versus vega, good versus evil. Uh, which one is good? Which one is evil? Well, it depends if you're long or short, quite frankly. Uh, but on there, um, what I feel, at least with this trade, is that it's still far enough away to where even if we just kind of putter around here for a while, that good will triumph over evil and uh, theta will win over vega, so to speak. And so for right now, good is still beating evil, at least in my world, uh, within that. For my long premium, I had a very uh, smaller position or a smaller delta position uh, on an uneven butterfly, and that was uh, it lost a little bit, but not a lot. So I think yesterday, the thing that was um, catching my eye most was just how the volatility was just running rampant, which it should on a day like yesterday. And so that was actually hurting more than the uh, downturn with my aggressive trading. So if you are in a spot to where you are short premium, a lot of times on days like yesterday, it is the volatility that's hurting you more than the market going down, which it definitely was in my case. And so have that understanding with uh, where you're going on things uh, for making trading decisions. Now, a couple other things that I'm noticing with this. Uh, let's see. What was I talking about earlier this week on something that I didn't like? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Bitcoin, uh, that's not doing so hot right now. And um, in, in the short term, I'll be curious. And I, I don't have any uh, position in Bitcoin. I mean, I'm doing a couple of straddle things in a few in my trading lab, so to speak. But um, full disclosure, I'm not a Bitcoiner, long or short, with any real money. Uh, but with that, um, it's going to be interesting to see how that reacts in a downturn like this with stocks. Because uh, yesterday was also uh, something that I uh, like to refer to as a kitchen sink. We were selling everything but the kitchen sink. Bonds were going down. Stocks were going down. Commodities were going down. Uh, everything was going down. And so when we have something like that happening, uh, it's interesting to see where the money shows up the next day. And... Of course, bonds and stocks are going up today. Uh, Ten-year notes up a little bit on the day today. Uh, of course, the S&P is up 40 points, uh, roughly 1% on the day. So things are coming back. And then uh, commodities are still relatively flat. But when we have something like that as the new, in the new Bitcoin age with which we are, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how it reacts to that. Uh, Bitcoin is down over 10% on the day today. And um, like I said, if you want a lot of movement in the short term, can't really ask for anything better, whether you're long or short. But uh, for the long term, still not a fan of holding it. And um, I think that with where we're at, and just full disclosure or full clarity, also on the commodities, uh, oil is actually down for quite a bit today. So I wanted to add that not all commodities are are up by any means. But anyway, with that in the Bitcoin world, I'll be interested to see. Uh, how that factors in, or if that factors in, as an asset class, just because right now there's so much interest in it. And then finally, um, it looks like we have our pipeline restored for our friends out to the east, so hopefully things are better there. And um, I think that with the pipeline restored and people are getting gas again, I think that will be a good thing, because I do think that did play a little bit of a factor into the sell-off yesterday. So that is what I am seeing, and that's what's lighting up my tape. Uncle Mike, I have extra bad news for you. As you were speaking, I know this this will really hurt you. Dogecoin broke 40 cents to the dark side. It's 39.90 right now, sir. So I don't know. I know you have to go back and rebalance your portfolio. So if you need to excuse yourself for the rest of the show, I will understand. But I know that will come as, as deeply unwelcome news to you and to the rest of the, of the St. Charles family over there. I, my condolences to all of you on, on the slow slow death by a thousand cuts these days of dogecoin yeah everything's taking a hit right now in the crypto land bitcoin off 11 percent eth off 10 and a third percent dogecoin off nearly 13 percent. it's funny musk who was almost single-handedly responsible for this next leg up across the board in crypto when they when tesla bought that bitcoin that really sent shockwaves for everything now kind of coming back the other way it's interesting <laughs> to think to say the least what's going on over there let's see what's going on from a broad market perspective let's kick things off right now in the big index land see what you folks are trading up you're trading up quite a bit go figure vix have finally pretty much blown the doors off from an adb perspective 510 
thousand contracts on the tape right now. That's usually the ADV, if not higher than the ADV, but that's on the tape right now. The ADV is up to 532,000. I got a feeling after today, it's going to be higher than that. So we're back up over half a million again, which is something to parse finally after kind of draining and being anemic for the better part of the last couple of weeks. Spy closing in on 3 million already, 2.85 million contracts. The ADV about 4.3 million. That's ticked up a little bit as well. That was about 4.1 million on Monday show. The S, 739,000. So the S is pretty much always exactly around 700K this time of the day. It's interesting. Not even today really could budget. The ADV has ticked up a little bit. It's back up to about 1.22. It's about 1.1 earlier as well the Q's already north of a million 1.05 million their adv is about one and a quarter million they're going to hit that today i think that's pretty pretty fair to say and small caps once again a big small cap story going on out there Five hundred sixteen thousand contracts on the tape for iwm you can also look at all the different rut products there's a million different flavors of iwm out there if you want to talk rut be back in about a little over an hour we'll be diving deep into all things small cap as well as you name it rates commodities maybe some crypto who knows all the things that are lighting it up this week over there on CME. So stay tuned for Twifo coming up a little over an hour there. The ADV, by the way, in IWM, 539,000. Seems like they're going to beat that today as well. All right, let's look at the most actives. And you know, for all this size, we're talking about all this volatility, all this paper flying fast and furious. Right now, it still only cost you 194,000 contracts to break into the top 10 most active today. So not even over 200K. We've seen many days, listeners of late, where it's 250, 260, 230, 194 today. That gets you to Microsoft there. So interesting. I thought there'd be more on the tape for the most actives. Let's see as we go up if that number increases. Number nine, AMD, 210,000 contracts. AMD still kind of, number nine seems to be kind of where it's landed these days. It likes to hang out there. It doesn't matter what's going on, what else is in the top 10. AMD will always be in there and probably at number nine. Number eight, Uber back in the top 10 here with 216,000 contracts. Number seven, Facebook, good for about exactly a quarter of a million contracts. Number six, it's Palantir. They had earnings, so you know they're going to be popping off some paper. 316,000 contracts for them. Number five, it's Neo. 380,000 contracts. Now we're getting up there a little bit. Number four, Baba. Now we're north of 400K, all the way to 452,000. Number three, AMC. Oh, we're all getting Mimi again today, are we? Let's see what's going on with AMC right now. Oh, wow. 1234. This thing's back up over the 10 handle and aggressively up over two bucks. Nearly 20%. Oh, the memes won't die. AMC, back up over the 10 handle here. Let's look back a little bit. Yeah, it was trading uh, 950 not that long ago, back last Friday. So, wow, crazy times in AMC. Good for 612,000 contracts. Surprisingly enough, it's not 99% calls. It's only 78% calls. I thought it'd be all calls all the time. Number two, it's Tesla with exactly, exactly, 1 million contracts on the tape. 1.000 million contracts. Don't see that too often. So Tesla on fire. But you know what? Apple still managed to eke them out, putting up 1.04 million. Let's just see how Tesla, how much of a hit. Yeah, 23 bucks (laughs) off about 4%, down to 566. As if they realized a large chunk of their profit last quarter came from their Bitcoin holdings. And Musk just kind of lit that on fire. So People love him. I get it. He's certainly a hyperbolic figure, but maybe times like this when he's when he's talking down one of your main investments that actually is making your company money. That's probably when he's a little bit frustrating to the to the board and everyone else out there. Let's keep on rolling right now. Let's talk about some other names that are maybe exciting or frustrating in equal measure. A hot and heavy week on the earnings front. You want earnings move? You want earnings moves results? We got them for you completely free of charge. Hot off the presses right before showtime. You know where to go. I'll give you some synopses here. You want the full kit and caboodle, the options insider.com. Click on the options, news and articles tab, and you're off to the races. If not up there, it'll be up probably by the end of the show. All right, here we go here. What we got big names popping off this week. Monday, we had Marriott out there in the hospitality land, Duke Energy. Oh, and Roblox, a new addition to our earnings juggernaut here. Tuesday, the aforementioned Palantir, as well as EA, going back out to the gaming sector. Wednesday, another newcomer, Poshmark and Bumble. Thursday, today, got Diz, Diz, as well as Airbnb, Alibaba, Coinbase today, and Farfetch. Let's break it down first. Let's get some move results reports right now. We got move results hot off the presses for Poshmark. This is their first one, I do believe. Let's see. They were yesterday after the bell. They were at 43.78 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 12.9%. And you know, 
very nice of them as a newcomer to the earnings vol scene to outperform, set a little bit of a pace here, delivering 14.2% to the dark side coming in right now. So they're at about a 37.58 as, as of this report. So a little bit of outperformance from the vol side. It's good to see. Let's see if we can keep it up. Baba, 219.90 is where they were going into their announcement today before the bell. They were pricing in 4.1%. So that's kind of light for them. And they delivered about 4.4%. So there you go. A little bit of extra outperformance. It's always a challenge when you're announcing earnings in these types of crazy macro markets, too. If you're announcing yesterday, announcing today, I mean, it's like you're spitting into the hurricane, right? It's like if the market's selling off 2%, no one wants to hear your noise. And vice versa, if you're rallying, it just it kind of eats up all the oxygen in the room, which makes it challenging for these names. Uh, Bumble, yesterday after the bell as well, 47 and about a quarter is where they were at the time of their announcement. They were pricing in 10.2%. That seems pretty rich. And it was because they delivered 6.9%. So a little bit of a wah-wah on Bumble there. Let's look here. The season, though, actually looking a little better right now, listeners. It's averaging, let's see, about 86%. So it's ticking up a little bit. So far, this week is actually outperforming. It's 111%. Some of that may be to do with a little bit of the macro vol environment we're seeing right now. It's probably adding a little bit of vol to all of these announcements. It's kind of, again, it's a bit of a spitting into the hurricane. It kind of obscures What's the actual earnings move versus what's being dragged along by the vol and the beta of the market? But still, this week is lifting things up. We're up to about 86%. That's the highest we've been, I think, maybe since the pandemic. But again, this week is not finished yet. We do have some names coming out a little bit later today. Let's get to some of these. Airbnb has kicked off with this one. By the way, if you want a cool breakdown, a cool earnings-related trade for Airbnb, after you listen into this, and of course, after you listen to Twifle a little bit later today, go check out. Options Playbook Radio, if you haven't already, Brian did a great breakdown, a great trade going into Airbnb earnings. You probably want to check that out. Right now, as of this report, Airbnb was at 140 and a quarter. They were pricing in, let's see, $18.71. Wow. And they delivered $13.05. So underperforming yet again. Coinbase, this is one a lot of people were keeping an eye on. They were at 283.61, so below their IPO, but still pretty lofty. Over there, they were pricing in 1867 in the past. They've moved nothing because there is no data for them. So we'll keep an eye on that one. That who knows? Is that rich? We don't know because we have no data on Coinbase. Interesting, interesting. So yeah, Airbnb pricing in 1305 in the past. They moved 1871. So Airbnb looking a little light there on the earnings vol front as well. And uh, let's see, let's go to Disney. They had some news recently about maybe China not liking some of their latest. Uh, Films coming out because the director, I think, made some comments about China or something along those lines. Either way, Disney at 177.85. They were pricing in 688 in the past. They moved 469. So that could be a little bit rich. That could be a road to ruin for Disney, or it could be merited given what we're seeing out there right now. Again, we got all these for you earnings move, earnings move results, and earnings season reports available in your hot little hands over there at theoptionsinsider.com. Had a great chat with Matt yesterday. Maybe put some more cool, fun stuff out there. They're cranking out so many cool things over there at Orats, and he wants to get them in your hands. So we'll see if we can provide more for you. As we keep on rolling into our next segment, it is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody, welcome to the odd block the portion of the show where we get weird we get wild we get whimsical perhaps not as crazy as shiba inu coin but <laughs> crazy nonetheless which is also down today by the way uh listeners uh, let's go on out and see what our eye of sauron found today it's like a bit of a weird one mr rock lobster we're hanging out in las vegas sands corp ticker symbol lbs trading right now right around 55 bucks 54.91 off about three or four cents not a big underlying movement day for Las Vegas Sands. We know this this segment of the economy has been challenged over the course of the past year. Not a lot of gaming or hospitality going on over the course of the pandemic. A year ago, it was trading 44.42, so it's rallied, but it hasn't really rallied that much net since last year. We know everything rallied up around June 8th. This one hit its high 
Actually, it was pretty much north of where it is right now, back on June 8th, 55.64. So it got up here a couple of times. Then it sold off pretty hard again, June 26th, 43 and change. Rallied all the way up again to, let's see, how high did it get that time? 53.10 on September 14th, and then gave it up again down to 45. Did that a couple of times, listeners, just in that period. Then it rallied again. 60.11 60.11 it got up to on December 4th, hung out there for a while, then gave it up again by, let's see, by, where are we here? By January 29th, was trading back in the 40s again, 48.09. And then once again, this thing just a glutton for punishment, up to 65.08, uh, 65.82 actually, on March 3rd, hung out there for a few weeks, and then back down to 59 bucks on March 23rd, and now down to where it is today, 54 82. So this one has made these levels multiple times in the past and has given it up pretty much every time. So an interesting chart here of Las Vegas. You see what our eye of Sauron found. Mr. Rock Lobster, this is a bit of a weird one. It first triggered off of a nearly 12,000 lot, 11,929 of the AUG 60 calls going up for 305. That is, by the way, a 41, almost 42% volatility. And it looks like they were lifting the offer. These calls were surprisingly tight. Three bucks at 305. We've been doing this for a little while. So I saw that flare up and I said, you know, this seems like there might be other other things afoot here in this trade. So we fired it up again to see if anything else. And sure enough, there was right around that same time. That went up 1046. And then let's see, 10 minutes later, there was a it looks like a short put spread versus a vertical. It's like they sold the June 50 puts 17,500 times. For 47 cents below the bid, they're a bid for 48 cents. And then looks like they picked up 17,500 of the June 5760 vertical, doing it for a buck 01. They paid a buck 75 for the 57, sold the 60s for 74 cents. They did all that 10 minutes later. It could be unrelated paper. Doesn't seem like it, though, just given the way everything else is going up. So kind of a weird explosion of paper. It seemed like there might have been like a conversion reversal earlier in the morning as well. So a lot of paper hitting the tape right now for LBS, uh, for just driven by all this earnings season madness going on out there right now. But Mr. Rock Lobster, what are your thoughts on this? You got, it looks like we got kind of a risk reversal, really. You got a tight one, though, 57, 60 vertical, and then the 50 puts there. So really a, a 50, 57 risk reversal with a 60 call kicker. And then you got also maybe someone gobbling up the AUG 60 calls as well. So looks like, yeah, the OI, these are not opening the June 60s. So they could be rolling the Junes. This is all sorts of weird, Mr. Rock Lobster. And then the size is different. <laughs> What's your take on this kind of, let's just call it an options palooza here in Las Vegas sands. I, I have to say, I think, I think palooza is a good word in this case. Um, there is some suspicious open interest on the 60s. If you, I think it's possible they might have owned the 60s and they're getting out of it, moving into the 57s, and they're going to try to sell the 50 puts to generate a little bucks for that. Um, but this is like one of those trades where it kind of went right in their face right away, <laughs> it appears. So um, I'm, um, you know, uh, I, I would just say um, – it, I, I again, I think they want to get long. I think they're doing the reopening trade. Um, you know, uh, Las Vegas was in the you know the sand was seventy three bucks. So I, I think they are. They're just trying to do a low cost way to kind of back in the reopening trade. Uh, Biden is talking about the Fourth of July, like everything is hunky dory. Of course, they'll declare victory. So I, I think this could be a trade like a run up into that. Um, that's that's how it appears the way I look at it. Right now. Yeah, I like that rolling. That 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 is a decent narrative. It's a either way, it's a weird one because if they are rolling, because it is opening on the fifty sevens, listeners. We don't know on the sixties, but there's enough OI to assume it could be closing. So if they are rolling the sixties down to the fifty sevens and then financing those with the fifty puts, they or someone else came in actually ten minutes before that <laughs> and bought also twelve thousand of the AUG sixties. So. Maybe that person who bought the AUG 60s inspired this roll, or maybe they decided to buy the AUGs first and then roll their existing Junes down, not take them off. Uh, either way, it's a weird one, listener. What do you think is going on out here? It is, I think the technical term is options 
Palooza. So let's go. <laughs> this reminds me sometimes when you guys send in your trades, and you're like, what do you think of this? And it started off as one thing, and you added 57 other legs to it, and now it's a hybrid monstrosity. That's kind of what this one is. <laughs> we'll try to come back to this one if we can and try to figure out more about what the hell this was going on. We'll put this in our to be watched category. But yeah, this is this is a lot of paper. Perhaps much noise signifying nothing. We shall see. Let's go on out now to another name we haven't talked about in a little bit. Going back out to Rio Tinto. This is an ADR, obviously. Trading right now, ticker symbol Rio, by the way, RIO. Trading right now, $88.92, off nearly 4 bucks, or about a little over 4%. This is the name that's had an interesting trajectory. A year ago, it was trading forty five seventy two. And it's kind of been mostly straight up with a few bumps along the road. Got up to pretty much where it is right now, right around 87 bucks on January 8th, then sold off down about 78. Then it rallied again in mid-February to 90 bucks, so north of where it is right now. Then it gave it up again down to 74 on March 23rd. And ever since then, it's been straight back up again, up to got as high as looks like 94, actually 95, 97 was the high back on May 11th. And now it's given it up again back down to where we are right now, 88, 84. So net on the year, it's been a pretty much upward trajectory, but a few fits and starts in the latter portion of that chart and having a little bit of a fit right now. Let's see what our eye of Sauron found out here today. It's a 7,000 lot listeners of the June 85 puts paying a buck 75 for these bad boys going through the offer. They were offered at a buck 70 said, I need 7,000. So I'm going to go all the way up to the buck 75. The stock was higher when he put these on listeners. Stock was at 90, 92. If you're wondering, actually that vol isn't as high as I thought. It's only a 36 vol. So it's not like he's paying a 90 vol or anything along these lines. There are not earnings in this cycle. The next earnings are July 28th. So he's going through June expirations. Mr. Rock Lobster, looking at this chart, it's maybe hard to argue with this guy. <laughs> maybe we're due for a little bit of a pullback in Rio. And given today's action, he's probably looking a little bit happy right now. What are your thoughts on these? Someone trading through the offer. He had to have them. These June 85 puts in Rio Tinto. PLC, sir. Uh, very, very interesting. Don't you think so, uh, Mr. Uh, Mister Longo? I do. I, You know what? I think they were this one where all of a sudden, like, these commodity stocks have really caught a bid, and then today they haven't. You know, I think it's a little bit – I find it a little bit oddball, to be honest. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on with it, but um, – you know, that's what we got right now. So I, I think, uh, I mean, they're somebody, you know, you buy 7,000 puts, you want them. Um, so probably there wasn't a whole lot of liquidity at 170. So they decided just to go buy them. And as I'm looking at it right now, let's see, the June. Yeah, they're already trading lit- 215. That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, they're already. So. You know, they're already making pretty good money right now. Uh, what, 25? Let's see, that's uh, almost 50 cents. That's like 45 cents a contract higher. What is that, uh, 280,000 bucks already? That's, uh, again, not a bad day. Not a bad day for this person. 10 bucks says this guy's going to have a huge move in his favor immediately, like today and tomorrow, right? And he's not going to do anything with them. <laughs> it's going to turn right around. And when we profile this, you know, a couple of weeks or a month from now and see how he did, he's going to have left a lot of money on the table. How much you want to bet, sir? Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I think, though, that is a uh, – or, you know, they're, they're super cagey and they buy stock. You know, they get that nice uh, – they get that nice little move down on the stock. That could be the case. I'm going to assume not. We'll put, we'll put in our to be watched and see how it fares. So far – 99% of the premium buys we've talked about have been have been losers. Let's see if this last one here can break the mold. We're going to put our Wayback Machine pants on, listeners, all the way back to February 22nd. Going back to one of my favorite combo names, Keurig Dr. Pepper. You don't often think of those two together in the same sentence. You, you don't want a Keurig coffee and then a Dr. Pepper. It's usually two different needs. But, hey, they're together in the same company, at least for now. Trading right now, KDP, ticker symbol. Trading right now. Actually, I won't tell you where they're trading right now. It's a bit of a spoiler. We'll get to that in a second. (laughs) Back on the show, we profile what looked like some some call love to the tune of the April 32 calls going up for a buck 20, lifting the offer. It was about a 32 vol. They went up 6,400 times on the Philly. And this was right before earnings, too. Earnings were February 25th, so three days later. Total of about 15,000 of these calls went up on the day. So 
people had to have him. Uh, the OI only went up to about 9,300, so a little bit of back and forth on those later contracts there for the Ape 32s, but clearly a lot of paper going up on that strike. Uh, this was this is a weird one as we look at this because I think the earnings kind of uh, made it a little bit challenging as well because this strike, unlike a lot of the other ones we talk about, they trade a big chunk and then they sit there for a while. This strike has been active many times since February 22nd. A lot of paper trading. Let's see. On the 1st, they traded another 7,000. On the 3rd of March, another 4,000. On the 23rd, the next day, they traded about 1,200. 8th, they traded about 1,200. On the 9th of March, about 1,000, 1,000 multiple days. The OI stayed consistently around between like 12 and got up to about 12 to 14,000 for a while there. And it stayed there north of 10 for most of it until we got close to expiration where the stock closed. At 36 bucks, 3601 actually. So these calls were still $4 in the money. So they should be pretty aggressive winners. And yet going into expiration, there were still 6,900 of these calls open. Now, so much paper traded since our, our trade date. It's kind of hard to profile exactly when our 6,400 lot actually closed. Or if he didn't, it is somewhat suspicious that the remaining OI is very similar to the size of the trade that we profiled, only 500 contracts different. So that could perhaps pose the question that maybe this guy or gal never closed them out. So that's still a winner, but it is strange that they don't close all these things out, which this is, again, a theme we're seeing here, listeners. You have winners on the long premium side. Take some of them off. I learned that lesson again myself. Earlier this week, I had it hammered into my head when I was busy hosting shows for you folks. So yeah, take your long premium winners off. Mr. Rock Lobster, Kind of a bonanza of paper on this strike, so it kind of obscures what actually happened. What's your conclusion? You think our friend here just let him ride? He wanted to get himself some Keurig Dr. Pepper at the 32 strike, and he didn't care what else happened, sir? I, I think that is possible. I'm looking at this. Again, that's an option pit rule, especially when you buy something. Take the money. I can't, like... Options are dates. They are not marriages. You know, they don't have forever lifespans. Um, it's not like you can keep rolling a put to take delivery. You know, your calls can just go away and they never come back again. So, um, I mean, I, I mean, it appears, right? It appears that this is a uh, a review of this trade. Let's see, do they make some money? I'm and I'm looking at it. Um, yeah, they should have. They should have made some money on this one. Now, what what did they do with it? Is an entirely another question, but you know, still, it looks, uh, it 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 appears as of right now at first blush that they made some bucks on this. That seems to be the case. So when it moves so aggressively in your favor, sometimes it's hard not to make money. <laughs> so they didn't have to take it off. I guess. I guess they wanted the stock. They wanted to pay a buck twenty for that right, but not the obligation to buy the stock, and therefore they did. <laughs> so we're going to assume he made money. How much money? That's open to interpretation. And if that's our guy or not left holding the bag at the end there, interesting nonetheless, but uh, we'll, we'll just assume he made money. So that, again, that's a good thing because for our premium buyers, it hasn't exactly been good. If, it, if this was following the pattern of our other premium buy trades, the stock would have gapped up to like 40 and then instantly, and then come right back down to his strike and below it. And he would have missed his chance and it would have been painful. Instead, you know, it's never painful though. It's your questions. So let's get to him. A little bit of the old mail block. It's time to take your seat on the all-star panel as we read your emails, tweets, Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Mail Block. You guys ask us awesome questions. We also turn the spotlight back on you on occasion. Right now, another poll, Fast and Furious. It's pinned again on our Twitter if you couldn't find it before. It's pinned again. You can find it at Options on Twitter if you haven't played yet. You got about a day left. And our question this week, markets hovering at all-time highs. At least they were when we posted this. Kind of given some of that back since then. Volatility trending lower. Again, it was when we posted this. <laughs> what is your go-to strategy in this environment? And as usual, if you don't see your favorite, hit us up with what you want to have there instead. We gave you four choices. We used to put buy calls and buy puts together. These days, you got to separate them because so many folks are gobbling up the calls. Buy calls, buy puts, the old covered call, or the old short put. That's your very basic selection of choices here. Oh, we actually had someone chiming in, Bubba. He said he wants diagonals. So there you go, Bubba, a fan of diagonals. 
Let's uh, go around the horn. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. If you have a, a favorite go-to in this environment, have at it. And then B, more importantly, what do you think our audience is voting for? I like to sell puts in this environment as a way of getting in. <clears throat> um, you can, Whenever you have a, a higher volatility on a dip, uh, you can sell puts. And what will happen is that if you have higher volatility, you can sell puts further away than you normally do, or you can get more premium than you normally do. But if you're looking to get into a stock and you want to do it through selling a put, I, I like doing that in this environment. Uh, otherwise, just holding on to what I'm doing. In terms of the audience, uh, I believe that they actually are, I think they're with me. I think they're put sellers too. Interesting. Mr. Rock Lobster, same question for you, sir. Um, to be honest, I think there's some put sellers. I think that's like right now, once we VIX gets up here again, I'm looking at July and August. Um, some really, really good yields, like 10, 15% on some stocks that I want to own, like crazy put premium again. So that's what I'm doing. Um, and right after the show is over, I'll be paying attention to make sure I don't screw it up like I did on the last show. So, um, yeah, I think that's what are our listeners going to do? I don't think our listeners really are put sellers. I'm going to say, I don't know. Are they, are they sneaky put sellers? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, go, I'm going to go call buyers. I'm going to say listeners call buyers. Interesting. Two polar opposite opinions here. Uncle Mike saying you're dark side sellers. Mr. Rock Lobster saying you're premium buyers right now with a day to go. Buying puts is actually winning. That surprises me. I did not think. That was going to be it with 40% of the vote, followed by number two, buying calls. I thought that would be winning. That was winning earlier on, just given the love everyone has for calls these days. That's at 30%. Then we got the covered call, ye old covered call, at about 26.7%. Coming up last with only 3.3%. No love for the short put right now. Fascinating, fascinating. You'll do covered calls, no short puts for you. Uh, get on over there at options if you haven't voted already. You got about a day left on this bad boy. Let's get out to the live chat, see what our crazy's got in store here. Uh, we got my boy Luigi <laughs> going back to you. I told you your Monday crypto comments, Uncle Mike, would reverberate for days. He says, So I was listening to Uncle Mike on Monday about crypto. He made a casual nod towards blockchain. So does that mean he is good with Ethereum? He also, <laughs> I think, as a homage to our wrestling discussion for Monday, he says, I smell what the rock is cooking. And he put in a, a nice gif of The Rock just steering. Our audience has a, quite a bit of a visual flair. Great, great gif work out there today. So Uncle Mike, are you good with Ethereum? Luigi wants to know. No, I'm not. I, I mean, I shouldn't say I'm good. I'm bad with it. But I mean, it's I, I'll, I'm going to wait for more established things. I mean, my typical style of investing I don't like to get in on the next big thing. I like to properly risk manage and leverage something that already is a big thing. So it's really not my thing. And um, uh, with that, uh, I'm glad Luigi smells what the rock is cooking. Um, and uh, if you haven't watched The Young Rock, it's kind of a cool show. I don't know if anyone's ever, if you guys have watched that yet or not, but a lot, I like a lot of the old 80s wrestling scenes. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome for the 80s wrestlers. The only thing that terrifies me about that show is it does seem like it's setting the subtle groundwork for a rock presidential bid in about 10 years, which scares the hell out of me. No more celebrities in politics. Let's just keep them out. <laughs> We've had our run that way. We're good. We're good for a while. All right, let's, uh, let's see what else our audience has. Oh, by the way, Luigi chiming in saying, um, he says, he says, here's your fine about the Dogecoin because you instead swapped to Shiba Inu coin. <laughs> yes. Oh, there it is. I heard Mike is fine because he changed his Doge for Shiba Inu coin. Unfortunately, that not, that not winning today either there. So Uncle Mike getting hurt on both fronts. His beloved Doge getting hit and also his new favorite, Shiba Inu coin, taking it on the chin. Going back to our uh, conversation from earlier, going back to the danger zone, Mr. Rock Lobster, again. Our visually gifted audience, Mr. Revon Gorgeous, chiming in here with an awesome gif. <laughs> I think this is that show Archer. I never watched it, but that's what it was coming from. And he's saying to a woman, seriously, call Kenny Loggins because you're in the danger zone. You, Mr. Rock Lobster, you're in the danger zone. What do you think of this, sir? I, I, I you know, <laughs> I, I might, I know, should it be taken aback? I uh, seriously call because you're in the danger zone. <laughs> I, I don't even know how to how, how to how to deal with that. Oh, maybe is it is it two unmasked people on the airplane? I 
I, I don't know. <laughs> no, oh, okay, just heard the CDC to say no more masks indoors or outdoors. Dude, if yep. that comes out, that could crush Vix, and I would make an effing fortune. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it won't happen, because Rock Lobster and myself are poised to make a lot of money if that would happen. Well, I'll tell you, Revon Gorgeous, just, I'm just telling you, I did not hear that, but I, uh, <laughs> I will be thrilled as peaches if that happens. <laughs> Uh, in case you're wondering, I, listen. I, I, make, I make way too much money. <laughs> Listeners, so we, we had another live comment in our chat from Mr. Unlimited saying, just heard the CDC is going to say no more masks indoors or outdoors. Announcement from the CDC coming in 10 minutes. That could crush the VIX, can't it? Uh, yeah, it could. It could. That's happening because I do see a thing on Twitter right now saying health officials still advise mask wearing and say it's safe and effective. That was from one hour ago trending on Twitter. So unless they're going to change that guidance, I don't know, but I haven't heard anything like that. This reminds me of the old days I was standing in the SPX pit, and the rumor comes flirting, oh, Yeltsin's dead this time. He's really dead. My cousin who's on the brother on the desk in Russia knows about it. He died 80,000 times when I was standing in that pit. So be careful about rumors there, Mr. Unlimited. All right, we got um, (laughs) Luigi saying long live bits, but yes. Uh, Let's see. Comment here. Uncle Mike, you're going to take umbrage to this. Comes from MGMT, so maybe the management, management making a comment. He says, road warriors were forgettable. Uncle Mike is crazy. Demolition for life. <laughs> I like this guy. This guy is a smart fellow. He puts in parentheses. Oh, I can see why he's a smart fellow. He says, and Mark is right. Axe and smash only. No crush. Yes, uh, MGMT, a.k.a. management. You are clearly a genius. You get our listener question of the week award, which is no prize. It's the old Marvel no prize. <laughs> but yes. Demolition for life, and of course, axe and smash. No crush. We don't speak of crush here. Uh, Mr. Rock Lops, or excuse me, Mr. Uncle Mike, do you take umbrage of that, sir? Extreme umbrage to that. I think that's the only listener question in nearly a thousand shows that I take umbrage to. That is, I, 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 that's horrible. I mean, the how can you not like the hawk and the animal? They're, they're the best. They're, they're the best tag team ever. They brought tag team wrestling to the forefront. I actually forgot about the demolition until you brought them up recently. No, no, it's the, it's the road warriors. There's no one better than the road warriors. I think our audience disagrees. And you know what? I'm a man of the people. I speak with the voice of the audience. So clearly, I must concur with them. And they are clearly a bunch of geniuses floating around out there. I got other people chiming in. We were talking about the, the CME closing most of their options trading pits recently. Uh, Scott Somer chiming in saying, uh, buried in the fine print was the euro dollar pit will be kept open. Yeah, that wasn't buried, Scott. They made that pretty clear. Euro dollar is one of the few pits they have that does paper, and the product is still complex enough. Look at our Twifo show, parsing the flow in euro dollars. Talk about spitting into the hurricane. There's so many months, so many series. They go out forever. Everything does a couple hundred thousand contracts. Putting all that upstairs is still a beast. They will eventually. They're trying to get there, but right now they're keeping it open. But yeah, it wasn't fine print. I think CME CME's never really been been shy about saying they weren't really in the floor game much anymore they closed the futures pits most of them back in the day and then the options pits have slowly been closing up and now we got one big dog left in the euro dollars and that'll probably go the way of the dodo sometime as well all right and drew investor almost chime all all easier for me to say drew investor also chiming in on the see me closing the floor he says they should have closed them all back in 2015 why hold on uh, you know, well, there's there's value still in a lot of these products. Look at SIBO. They've said many times for the SPX, there's still a large order flow base that likes the high touch, calling up the pit, getting that side of execution. And the pit is still good at that type of complex transaction. You know, the, the electronic board has gotten better on that, but still on the complex, the things that go up in the S, like, you know, the crazy one by three by five ratio spreads and that kind of crap. The floor is still better at that, and it's getting there. I mean, obviously, CME feels comfortable. I asked this of Tim McCourt, the guy who runs all the equities at CME last week. I said, you guys are comfortable putting all this flow up, but even the complex stuff in the S&P, up not just in electronically, but they also got rid of their big S&P contracts. It's all E-minis now. And they said, yeah, we're comfortable doing all of it in E-minis and all of that flow electronically. So they think they're good. But either way, it's interesting that they would choose to do that. Uh, SIBO has clearly not drawn that line. They have much more of a vested interest in the floor. And for certain products, Euro dollars being not one of them, there still is a need for that uh, floor-based execution. Let's see. This is We have more questions, but uh, we're kind of kind of running up against it here. So let's keep on rolling into our final segment. It is time to go. 
around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for the rest of this week. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you. We know you're watching Doge. We know you're watching Shiba Inu coin. But outside of that, what else are you keeping an eye on for the rest of this week until Monday, sir? Well, I want to see if the SPX could hold 4,000. I mean, I, we could get another sell-off tomorrow uh, or in the next couple of weeks, of course. Uh, I think 4,000 is a pretty key number for the SPX, so I'm watching that. Watching the 10-year, seeing if we can rally a little bit more um, in that uh, the 10-year note itself. Uh, got went down yesterday and just seeing where we can go with that going forward. Uh, and then um, I'm watching I'm, Kind of curious to see what Biden says about the new CDC guidance on indoor mask wearing and how that affects the market as well. Uh, and then finally, what I'm watching is hopefully what I would encourage our audience members to do is I need the hawk and the animal fans to come out and help me out and then flood Mark Longo's emails with emails saying how great the Road Warriors were. That will never happen because our audience is a very, very smart bunch. Yeah, I'm looking here. Uh, everyone, NBC News and others are all saying CDC plans to drop mask requirements for fully vaccinated people. So that rumor is out and about. Uh, we shall see how that impacts the markets. Mr. Rock Lops, I won't ask you about the ongoing demolition versus road warriors debate because I know you have no idea who they are. So instead, I will ask what you and Ballman are keeping an eye on for the rest of this week, at least until Ball views tomorrow, sir. Um, I, I do find the mask thing for vaccinated people curious. I'm not quite sure. Uh, how, how are they going to tell that? You know, are you going to wear a gold yeah, star? You got to flash your. You got to flash your card. Or every time someone comes up to you, you have vaccine. Sure, I got my vaccine card right here. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are they going to? You going to a stamp on your forehead? Uh, anyway, um, uh, all of that is uh, anyway very bizarre. I just that is I think good news overall. Um, so uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but I, I think that would be good news. Uh, how good news? I don't know. I, I, to be quite honest, I really don't. Um, I think there might be some, there could be some counter flow. And I think the counter flow is just some of these high flying tech stocks are still getting hit. Um, and I, I think we have to wait to see how that plays out. So um, at least until that happens, uh, you know, I think no mask stuff means I think overall that's very positive. Uh, but we'll see how how that actually plays out in the big in the big picture. Unfortunately, that music means we'll have to wait to see how all this plays out. But you don't have to wait too long if you need a little bit more content in your ear holes. And who doesn't on a day like today? If you're listening live, stay tuned. We'll pump some fun stuff into the live chat. We'll be back in exactly half an hour, actually 29 minutes now, to go live with this week in Futures Options, breaking down all the action. Uncle Mike was just breaking down earlier on the commodities front. And everything else, a lot of stuff popping off over there. Got some great guests to help me do just that. But before we go, let's go back around the horn. Let's start with the rockingest of lobsters, Mr. Rock Lobster. If folks are intrigued, they want to hit you up, talk to Ball Man. Where should they go? What should they do? Um, you go to optionpit.com. Uh, check out our memberships. Uh, all kinds of stuff ball related. So uh, take a look, see, and see how it all is going there. There you go, optionpit.com. Mr. Uncle Mike, if they want to hit you up to tell you exactly why demolition is the best, where should they go? What should they do? Follow me on Twitter, uh, at Mike Tusa, or check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, you can be updated on my weekly blog to where I expand what I discuss in the strategy. I blog. think that should be a Twitter poll that you post, sir. Best tag team ever, demolition or, or the Road Warriors. We will retweet it for you, and we'll see what the audience says. All right, you're game on. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for Uncle Mike's forthcoming Twitter poll. I know how you're going to vote. You're a smart audience. Meanwhile, stay tuned if you're listening live. We'll be back in 28 minutes, 27 minutes now. Clock's ticking. I got to get ready for Twifo. Back again tomorrow, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern for Vol Views. Then it all kicks off again. We're closing in, listeners, on the big episode 1000. It's coming up, but not yet, not quite yet, as we come back on Monday for another episode of the Option Block. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast.
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>